Welcome, welcome to my channel for a special human design transit report. I am doing this report uh, in front of actually the major themes for September because of things that are happening right at the beginning of September. And so this is a special report. And then you can also look for the major themes for the whole month of September coming out on the first. So we're going to talk about uh, Pluto. <laughs> Because Pluto, if you're astrologically minded at all, or if you're kind of metaphysically connected to this idea of bringing in the new world, uh, then you will have been following what's been going on with Pluto. So back in January 2024, Pluto moved into Aquarius. And Pluto had been in Capricorn since 2008. And when Pluto first merged into Capricorn, we had the um, huge financial crisis of 2008. That was a big change that was happening as Pluto was coming in to the um, the sign that has to do with institutions and governments um, and big money um, uh, structures and um, and so on. Okay, so Capricorn is kind of known as the holder of the old order, um, but you could also hold Capricorn as just the structure, right? Uh, it really has a lot to do with that. And I personally think Capricorn can be a great ally for us in developing our own individual devotion and our own div individual discipline, because that's also what Capricorn is about. But Pluto was has been in Capricorn from 2008 until the beginning of 2024 and has been in Aquarius the beginning part of this year and then um, on September 1st is going to uh, move back into uh, um, Capricorn for um, a little while until the middle of November. And so I wanted to show you a little bit of what this looks like from a human design point of view, because the way that astrology works is a little bit different than the way human design works. So this image that you're seeing here is where the gate 60 is in the human design mandala and how it relates to the astrological signs. And what you'll see is actually the gate 60, which which is where Pluto has been for a few years, um, is actually straddles the two astrological symbols. And the gate 60 is known as conservation. It's known as the gate where we are, it can be th thought of as a conservative gate. It's in the knowing circuit and it's at the bottom of the root. And so we've got all this energy coming in through the knowing circuit, coming around both sides of the body, and then they're going to come up through that central channel. And that 60 is a little bit like a gatekeeper. The 60 is a little bit like, hmm, okay, we've been bringing in all of these changes all of these evolutionary perspectives on ways of being. We've been looking at mutations. Uh, this is what happens in the knowing circuit because the knowing circuit is where the in, uh, evolutionary impulse of humanity runs through the human design chart. And so this is happening dynamically, ongoingly in the knowing circuit. And so when we get to the gate 60, we're kind of going, okay, what is it that we want to carry forward with us? What is really important? And so when we've had Pluto in the 60 in Capricorn, Pluto's been on the one hand looking at the structures that have been the top down authority, the hierarchical call uh, structures, if you will, that more typically characterize Capricorn. And um, Pluto's been in there kind of illuminating the corruption that's been a part of it, illuminating the ways that it is not working for everyone, helping to shift some of uh, those power relationships, because Pluto is very interested in power and in helping to evolve our relationships to power. And so this is what's been happening with Pluto and Capricorn, and then moved into Aquarius at the beginning part of this year is just, if you can see, it's at the very end of the, um, uh, the, ga the gate 60 in human design, and it's in Aquarius, and now it's about to retrograde back into Capricorn for another 10, 11 weeks. And it's kind of this last chance for us to be looking at what is it from the old order that we want to bring forward? Right. What is it we want to bring forward? And also, what are we finally really releasing? 
of these top-down power stru structures of hierarchical power structures because Aquarius is much more horizontally oriented, whereas Capricorn is more vertically or hierarchically oriented. Aquarius is definitely more about awakening. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which is the planet of revolution and rebellion and awakening. We're going to come back to Uranus in, in just a second. So it's, this is really a time when Pluto is retrograding back into um, Capricorn to be thinking about what is it that you can still shed? What is it you can still let go of? What old belief system are you living inside of that isn't supporting you anymore? What way of assuming how things should be or your expectations about how should be? How is that? Is it still suiting you? Is it serving you or is it not? I had a conversation with a friend recently where she said she was becoming kind of shockingly aware of what I would call her default lens, right? The way that her personality sees the world and fits things into categories and fits things into boxes, which is, of course, we all do this, right? But she was becoming super aware of the lens through which she was seeing things. And she was going, I don't really like the aspects of this lens. Some of it's great, but some of it I really need to upgrade. So this is kind of what is happening here with Pluto going back and forth in that gate 60 and is now back in Capricorn uh, until, like I said, the middle of November. And so the question for you is, what are you going to uh, what are you going to do with this time? Right. And then also to make it even more interesting, Uranus is has um, a slow, 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 slow down and is stationing. Um, right about now, and is uh, going to be moving in is retrograding on September 1st. And, and Uranus is in the gate eight, which is the gate of contribution. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the throat center. And so it's like, what are we putting out into the world? So if we just think about this for a second, Uranus is ruling Aquarius, right, which in Pluto is going in and out of Aquarius, and Uranus is ruling this, right. And then we have Saturn that's ruling Capricorn, and so Pluto is relating to Capricorn um, and to Saturn as well. So we've got all of these different relationships that are going on right now. And they're getting highlighted on September 1st when <laughs> Pluto is going to move back into Capricorn and Uranus is going to be right there and it's going to retrograde in um, gate eight. And Uranus is like, okay, so what are we breaking up now of this old order? right? What are, what do we need to awaken from? What have we been asleep to? What have we just been willing to go along with? Because Capricorn was saying, you know, Saturn was saying, this is what we need to do. So we we're just diligently doing it. Uranus comes along and says, wait a minute, we don't have to do that. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Pay attention to this for yourself um, over the course of uh, particularly this weekend and into next week. And these are things that we're going to be feeling really through the end of the year. Um, uh, because Pluto is going to be, like I said, in that uh, retrograde uh, into Capricorn for another 10 weeks. Uranus is um, retrograding, slowing way down. And the intensity of the emotional energy and the intensity of the qualities of that planet um, grow when it slows down and when it stations and then it starts to turn retrograde. So right now, everything Uranian is uh, even more amplified than usual. Then we also have the new moon um, in Virgo is happening uh, on the second, happening on Monday. So it's coming right up. Uh, new moons are always a good time to be uh, looking at what is your intention for this new cycle going forward. So it's kind of like the winter solstice or a new moon, um, at the beginning of your day. What is your intention for yourself for moving forward? And so it's a nice thing to be thinking about between new moons. Um, and we're in Virgo. And so Virgo is um, really this energy for order. Of course, we know Virgo is very orderly. Virgo is very very uh, focused on beauty. Um, Virgo is also the divine feminine. And so as you're moving into this time, what is it that you're feeling and experiencing what that you would like to bring um, Virgo energy to during the course of this month? It's a good time to be kind of bringing more order into your house, clearing clutter out or reorganizing that sort of thing. But we're also going into this last quarter of the year. And so are there things 
you want to get in order for yourself before the year completes in December? Are there things that, you know, you've been, you've come in maybe from a busy, um, perhaps chaotic, joyful summer, and now you're kind of reorganizing yourself and getting yourself um, uh, focus on the rest of the year. And of course, you know, for so many of us, we start, we, you know, through the course of our life, we started school in September. Now they start school in August, but you know, around this time. And so we have this begin, this idea of things really beginning here at the beginning of September. So you can be using this for yourself to be giving extra um, support to what it is that you want to be creating and bringing in to your life right now. This new moon is in the gate 40, which is also where the sun is. The sun and the new moon are always in the same gate. It's also where the sun is. And so this is the gate of restoration in quantum human design. It's known as loneliness in traditional human design. And it is part of the channel of the bargain, which is the 4037, which is lit up uh, during the current human design transit that will continue through uh, through this new moon, uh, and then it changes on September 3rd. And so this is also a good time to withdraw a little bit, to be a little more restorative, to be taking good care of yourself, to be noticing, you know, are you making yourself a priority? Are you taking good care of what you need? Or are you tending to be um, more outer focused? And which is something that we tend to do during the summer, right? And maybe it's time to really kind of come in consolidate, integrate, um, and help to restore yourself from a busy time because this is a tribal energy. So it may be that you've spent a lot of time with um, people in your family or friends. Um, and so you need a little restoration during this time. And that makes it really um, a sweet time also to be setting your intentions um, for this upcoming um, for this upcoming moon cycle and for the rest of the year. And you can bring into this intention setting that you're doing what's happening with Pluto and with Uranus, which is what do I need to wake up to? What have I been agreeing to that maybe hasn't always been in my best interest? How have I been subordinating myself or submitting myself to power structures that aren't supporting my full flourishing and my joy and my happiness and my ability to participate in the world that is really meaningful? Um, and satisfying for me. So you can bring all of these together for yourself for this weekend and just be looking at um, how can I um, have the gods work more for me? How can I fall in love with them and work with them and dance with them and not feel that I'm at the mercy of these comic cosmic energies? And I want to let you know that I did do my um, Crack the Human Design Type and Strategy Code Masterclass earlier this week. And you, if you do register for the class, you will receive the replay. So I'm going to make that possible for you for the next couple of weeks anyway. So if you're interested in that, do go and register for it. The link will be down in the um, description and uh, and then you can get the replay. The replay link will be right in your confirmation email. So you can go right to that. And of course, I always love to hear how these land for you. And finally, if you are somebody who has taken a look at my Activate Your Superpowers Understanding Human Design um, program, which has been my signature program to really orient you to the fundamentals of human design. In that crack, uh, the code masterclass that I did, I made a very, very special offer for my Activate Your Superpowers class, and it's connected to our sovereign sisterhood. So I highly encourage that you that, that you go and check that out, and that if you do feel called, um, that you come and join us. All right, many blessings, much love. Bye for now.